Salutations everyone, of course I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO playing as a Kingdom of England. So last time, we made some gangbusters for our GDP. Holy cow. Like, we, 70 and a half billion dollars versus this debt. Ah, oh, we're so good right now. But anyways, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do the Workplace Corruption Act or a meeting in Liverpool. At the time of this recording, there was almost complete absolute support for the Workplace Corruption Act. So let's try it out. So as old saying goes, actions speak louder than words. If the people are to be convinced of our populist struggle against the elite, we must prove that we are willing to act upon it. The Workplace Corruption Act will fight against corruption, benefiting the rich and powerful within the workplace, from nepotism to insidious backroom deals. Naturally, their confusion and their behavioral twist into fury, but this will only benefit us in the long run. So, uh, let's see. Later on in this focus tree, we do get the options, probably of joining either the Hun, or an old friend. So, it was recommended from the comments yesterday that I might try a relationship with our old buddies across the city, our former colonies. So, we'll see about that. We'll see if we can maybe go down that way. It seems like we should go down that way since we're not really pulling too hard for Germania to help us out. But we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Ooh, promise change in the countryside. We have a, we have a lot of elite support. Holy cow. Holy smoke, already knows. Let's see, deficit, not good enough. Cut it down again. Even though we don't sm spend much at all on our um, military spending. That's okay. So we'll see what happens. Let's see. Ooh, ooh. Emperor Bao Dai abdicates. Communist Party. Oh boy. Three civilian factories? Yes, please. I kind of want more naval dockyards, but even then, it won't even really matter. So let's not do that. I could honestly probably use a few more military factories. So let's get another one of these guys going. Should be pretty easy to make. There's no directly inland place except for London and these two provinces. But that's okay. I'll put you right there. See what you can do and then build up some more in... Man, we need to build some infrastructure. Put them up in East Midlands. That'd be good. And maybe eventually build up infrastructure. It costs us money, yes, but whatever. It doesn't really matter to me at, at, at this point of the campaign. We're not lacking steel, but that's okay. Cool. Uh, what was I saying earlier? Oh, Algerian Mandate. Look at that. Huh. The Workplace Corruption Act. Very cool. Misali. Uh, let's see. So we did that. Let's looking in new industries. We'll go to lower our elite support, but we'll get more populist support eventually. The growth of cutting-edge sectors these last few years, in particular computer engineering, has introduced the world of business to young, fresh-faced CEOs, polar opposites of established captains of industry. Thatcher can easily envision herself working hand-in-hand -hand with England's new nouveau riche than with the stead man decades their senior in wealth, influence, and above all, corruption. So, we've got this little thing to do. We have about 1.3! Wow! 1.3 political power today! That's actually a lot more than I thought we'd get. So we have 240 out of the 869.75 MPs. Honestly, I don't even know what this even means anymore. Like, I'm not going to go with the old guard. I'm probably going to go with the United England again, just because they have so many more votes. So if we wait it out, we'll probably get there in time. In 50 days, yeah, we'll definitely get to United England. I'd love to do more of this stuff, but we're at 72% influence. Holy cow, that's so much. I'd love to hold support over here, but I don't want to lower that. The Romania says with Germany, the Romanians just can't catch a break. That kind of sucks. Uh, let's see. Military loyalty. I kind of want to do this one too because we want more loyalty. Elite support goes up by 5%. That's pretty darn nice. Populist support goes down. It's, it's super easy to get popular support, so it's not too difficult to appease the populace to a degree, if you want to say. Calling the old guard. Annual meeting. Let's call him the old guard first. As the prime minister expected, our current populist course of action has sparked fury among the royal party's old guard whose cries of protestation have since transformed into anger. In order to placate these esteemed gentlemen and secure their tenure support, Thatcher will quell their fears through private conversations at times and places of their choosing. It's always good to meet with people individually, just to calm them down. Now, I have no idea if this is going to work or not, because that doesn't make too much sense. How do you have 0.75 of an MP? But let's see with... Let's see how much support we get with compromising with the United England. So 240 becomes 283, which does not seem like a lot. <clears throat> but oh well, that's as much as we're going to do. If, we're, if we can't pass everything, so be it. There's just not much that we can really do about that. I'll keep growing that GDP. Strategic cycles, huh? Very good, very good. Let's see. Nice. Less organization, less moving. Minus 
Military construction speed, good. It's 66. Let's grab some more resource efficiency gain. Ah, uh, should get some, two more rubber. Ooh. Very nice. <clears throat> Engineering, this stuff won't even happen. Radar, let's get some radar actually, because I could probably use that later on. Just gotta keep growing that GDP, man, though. Mmm, mmm, love it. Also, someone asked what was this uh, Union Jack here doing? It's a House of Commons. Government stability is 53%, which is not bad. Which is actually really, really good. 67% support our government, which is awesome. 271 have support, so basically, we can tell everyone to bugger off if we want to. National Front, UE, UE, and then House of Commons. So, let's, we'll read that very soon. And then we're going to go ahead and maybe, maybe we'll try a necessity. Ever since Margaret Thatcher became Prime Minister of England, she has had one fundamental goal. The restoration of what she believes in England's place on the rightful world stage. In order to take up this mantle, she believes that Great Britain must first be reunited. This will only be possible with a pact or OFN with assistance. However, before Thatcher can begin to take a more active role in foreign policy, she will have to meet with Francis Pym. Despite being fiercely loyal to her prime ministership, Pym is unlikely uh, uh, to ap appreciate what he believes is Thatcher's increasingly excessive control of his area of policy. Oh boy. <clears throat> so, we have uh, the old guards. You can only twist so many arms now. Cabinet finds himself surrounded by the most weathered veterans of the Royal Party, realizing that their time has passed, yet still looking to restrain the ambitions of an increasingly aggressive Thatcher premiership. Mrs. Thatcher, do not mistake your leadership of the Royal Party for absolute dominance. We built modern England, and we cannot have you steer into a dark, obscure direction. Why do you ask the wealthiest and most productive members of society, supposedly those you champion, to follow your lead and keep your money, their money out of the House of Commons? How else are we supposed to have the resources we need to crush our enemies? How are we supposed to preserve their wealth in an economy at an edge of abyss? We cannot survive there is... If not, if we are not a people's party, the elites must learn that or fall on the ash heap of history. Get old money, get more influence. The party must be the supreme authority in England, or we'll be scattered to the old wind. We get old money. Uh, the elite are lecherous parasites. We have the weapons and money. We are the state. Damn it. We will take the discipline like good boys. Um, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> I don't want to piss them off. Like, I'm not really a guy who wants to piss everyone else off. Unless I have absolute power. But, uh, the elites must learn that. Alright, let's do that. So, the old guard was our stubborn bastards. Institutions will never be changed without kicking and screaming. So then tell us, Miss Thatcher, if you are so hell-bent on controlling this party, on crushing dissent and the wealthy figures who help in supporting such dissenting views, how will you stay in power? We are not some sickly liberal cesspool. If you alienate the creators of wealth before you implement your agenda, then we're afraid you aren't long in the seat. How will you do, or how will you please the power brokers? We should give them the elite to the table at this, a seat at the table in all party decisions, although I hope my agenda is clear enough in the aims that they do not need to do so. This political power, we shall give more stability and prosperity than ever. That in itself is evident of how I shall support them in harmony among all classes. Or to hell with them, I will run England or with or without their money. I am in charge here, and it must stay that way if you wish to maintain peace. That seems like we could become really quite the dictator if we really wanted to. Sounds like fun, but I don't want to go down that path with uh, Thatcher for this one. Let's see. I shall give the elites a table. They shall seat, sit with me. Now we have no political power, so we might lose this. But I kind of doubt it, since we did pretty well last time. Cool. Yeah, 283 is pretty good. Workplace Management Act is always good to do as well. <sighs> man, politics, man. Better do a cup of coffee to keep Maggie nice and me nice and warm and happy. 79% influence. That's so nice. 16, ah, 69, 73. Very good. Very good. Ooh. Ah, uh, I think the game still thinks we're doing elections, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Who cares? Almost 71 billion. How do you get more growth, though? Hmm. Deficit's looking a little better. Hey, look at that. 71 billion. 71 billion. The pass acts. Uh, or passes. So, the support will go down. The Royal Party support will increase. Popular support goes up as well. Uh, well, that, that always happens. If you wanted to read it, go right ahead. Or, I guess you could have. 70 f versus 74. And 80% influence. God dang. The annual party meeting. We can do that one a little later. Face to face with the people. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's do that one. <clears throat> the Prime Minister will meet with various English communities, delivering speeches, engaging in private conversations, and attempt to understand the personal situations and provide solutions to the issues they raise. Oh, Maggie's doing a great job. She is doing a wondrous job. Oh, civilian austerity? Uh, I'm thinking some more civilian austerity. Oh, that actually didn't help us at all. Okay, maybe I should not have done it then. How is our stockpile? So we still need some anti-air. We're doing well actually on anti-tank finally. Anti-air artillery. 
and what was it CV planes? Maybe not. Uh, it's hard to tell. Oh, these are just fighters. Duh, they say fighters. Mr. Mocha Lover, what are you doing? Not thinking. That's what I'm not doing. Oh, the Popular Republic of Congo. If it's so popular, why did it get declared upon? Fighters. Fighters. Anti-tank. Uh, Anti-air, I mean. Fighters. Need more artillery. Face to face with the people. Let's see. So we got this coming along. We'll do that. There. That's looking pretty good. Uh, leave it on two for now. Cool. So... Heard on the street, we shall read once we do the annual party meeting. Actually, I, I kind of want to do the permanent campaign. By design, modern politics excuse entertaining weak willed men content to campaign only in a prescribed season of, of a prescribed year. The English people must be constantly reminded of what the royal party is doing to help them. To accomplish this, we will set up a permanent campaign apparatus so that we can better and more frequently communicate our plans to the masses. <clears throat> Just don't take like to, to, don't take to like Twitter to tell tell everyone your feelings like a certain president. Uh, heard on the street. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, Maggie went to the people themselves, the average, ordinary working fellows, chaps and chapettes. She strolled royally down the lanes, a camera crew in town, or in tow, as she walked up to a blessed passerby and asked, Good evening, how might I trouble you with a few questions? You're Mag, uh, the Prime Minister, aren't you? Indeed, sir. Would you say that you would prefer expansion of all businesses to create jobs and increase growth, as well as your own wages? Well, I don't know much about interest rates myself, but I certainly like a bit more take-home, so yeah, why not? And do you believe that the country is best served increasing its welfare until those people like yourself who work, do work have no incentive to do so, as their time would better be spent off laying about their homes doing nothing? Well, I know, with a couple of lazy layabouts. Most of them are looking for work, I don't know, I suppose. Well, thank you very much, sir, and I wish you the best fortune. Vote royal next election, of course. And she turned to the cameras for a few last words. <clears throat> this is what business can do for the country. David and Goliath. Uh, we can press forward and tend with our plans, but we can never forget those without this golden opportunity. Huh. So we piss off these guys, David and Goliath. Well, I mean, we are at 70 and 74. We can press forward, but we can never forget those without this golden opportunity. <clears throat> it seems like we're going to lose influence regardless. Popular support goes up even more, which I don't really care about too much, David and Goliath. We can never forget those without this golden opportunity. Oh, let's, let's try that one. Let's try that. We, we get political power, which would be nice. David and Goliath. <clears throat> On one of her many visits into the teeming populace, she happened into a small business selling ice cream. Good evening. Before I take a look at your stores, may I ask you a question or two? Specifically, how are you getting on under our current policies? And how do you think that our new monetary policies will expand your business? Well, I suppose things have been all right. Shops are just going about as well as ever, but we're not really expanding. I'm not sure if any of the new stuff I see on the news is going to help, since that's mostly for rich people. I mean, when is some support coming to help people like me running the small stuff? Well, naturally, I can sympathize. I haven't grown up as a daughter of a small business owner. I know the passion and drive it takes to run your own business. I assure you that the RP's new policies will help you out greatly if you seek to expand your business and open up new shops. What we want to do is not make the rich richer, but to make sure that everyone with abilities such as yourself to pick up themselves and take their business forward can do so. This will make sure that all people can rise to their God-given ability and make the country better for it. Oh, I might have a mint. Can I have a mint chocolate chip? Large, please. Wow. Large ice cream. Jeez. As she uh, turned towards the camera, cone in hand, she said a few last words. Big business, after all, is truly the backbone of our economy. It must be helped. Um, Big business? Uh, I don't know if populist support would increase if you help all big business. Maybe? I was thinking it might help delete some more. It's just as important as small businesses is not the primary aim of the reforms. Hmm, you know what? You know what we could do? Big business, after all, is not the primary aim. I want to say, I want to do that one to get more political power so we can really get things going. So let's do that. I don't know anything about the England of a... The England? The England. The economy of England. Oh, happy 1967, though. But, uh... I would... Is it like in America where small businesses employ the most people, I think, is it? I can't remember. But I wanted all this political power just so we can do some more stuff. So, let's go ahead and get some more military efficiency so that they're not inefficient. But, let's go ahead and visit urban, urban centers for more GDP. Hold a speech in Parliament. Yeah, no, we're pretty good about not doing that. Promote change in the countryside. We'll probably do that one, too. Uh, I kind of want to do this one, actually, as well. Shame the opposition, yeah, no. Oh, we can hold a rally. We're going to have to hold a rally. I don't have as much political power as I would have liked. So, 74% influence. Hmm. See that. Is that. Cool. We lost a little bit of influence, but now we have 77%. 72% elite support, which is awesome. 78% influence. Okay, there we go. 
And then 76% uh, populous support, which is awesome. And we're creating more jobs in the countryside and in urban areas. So literally both. Six more, yep. There you go. Uh, Russell, finish. Ceasefire seas. The perfidious Finn escaped just, just again. Ah! Provisional Commissariat of West... Commissariat of Western Huda, Russia. Andre Vlasov. The West is... This is Sumera, I think, right? German military... No, oh, no. Training. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Italy joins OFN. Oh, that might just mean we will have to join OFN as well. The free world just gotten bigger. Private Enterprise, Overton Administration. Honestly, this reminds me so much of, like, Metro. The Metro franchise. Like, 2033, Last Light, and stuff like that. I love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, how do you do that? We need more than 60 military loyalty. Okay, that's good. The annual party meeting. <clears throat> the Royal Party is preparing for the annual meeting, and the Old Guard is naturally fur furious at their leader for her recent actions. If the Prime Minister is to increase her support within the party, she must demonstrate the ability to prove her worth before her detractors do. Oh, boy. Norway's looking pretty good. Ah, oh, they're independent. I don't think they have a focus group, do they? No, they don't. Agricultural devolution. Military austerity? Well, I don't think so. Ah, oh, Zimbabwe. What happened to Rhodesia? There you go. Save that money. We need as much money as possible. Wow, that is just a giant hole. Jesus. It really looks like a nuke went off here. Actually, it might have. No, no, that was a, this was that's not a nuke. It was a damning effort. I remember now. It's a damning effort, like in the Congo... Or something like that, so... That looks terrible. I, honestly, that looks really terrible. <laughs> so much for uh, Nazi science. Fighting, approaching the dragon. A basic appraisal of Wales' history since independence clearly demonstrates what a failure it has been. A wealth of national resources completely squandered to suit one man ego. A powerful united front bogged down in endless compromise and division. These afflictions are exactly what our new Britain will seek to remedy. The Welsh people deserve to be free of the scourge of divide, divided, ego-driven governments, and they must be recognized that their past, present, and future is inseparable from England. Whether we reunite by pan or sword is up to them. Time to end their little experiment, whatever it takes. Look at that political power. <clears throat> we need more loyalty right now, so... Hmm. I'm going to go and do that, because we do definitely need more loyalty. Let's see, I could lower our elite support by even more. Where's... That's elite support. I don't want to lose any more influence still. It's so easy to get popular support compared to elite support. I could do this. I really don't want to lose influence some more, but we could. You know what? I'll do it one more time. Why not? Me with industrial giants. Hurts our influence, but that's okay. I need more elite support. So I can do this, but I don't have to increase it too much because our military loyalty will increase some more. 66.7%. So it's slowly going down, the base loyalty. So if I increase it one more time, it'll stay at 70, which is not bad. Oh, we actually got to make sure that this doesn't get down too low either. Hey, we actually have a division. Look at that. Oh, does that increase the budget? It might a little bit. <clears throat> Even more growth, please. Oh, we have this. The Welsh issue. Ooh. Mobilize the reserves. Army experience. I kind of like that. I'm going to get some more military loyalty before we do that. Oh, we're not dealing with unification. Are we dealing with unification? Oh, I guess we are dealing with unification. Oh, that sucks. Oh. We're not dealing with unification. Oh, I guess we gotta deal with unification first then. So the Welsh issue. <clears throat> the simple fact that Wales is separate from the rest of England undermines the government in the eyes of the rest of the world. The government there has set up an illegitimate government that has no reason to exist. Therefore, we must be brought back under our control of the Westminster. We will deal with them swiftly and resolutely. Uh, they will not block us from reclaiming our, great, our right to greatness. So yeah, we actually need to increase this so we don't fall back down. I didn't realize it would actually fall down. We lose 2%, the Welsh issue. Expand the foreign ministry, let's do that one. Oh, there's no event there. So whatever. 74, 78, I mean, that's so good. 76% influence is not bad either. Efficiency will rise. Great, great. So now we're at least have 50%. Next one I want to do would be for at least getting up to 70% for loyalty. That would be very, 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 very good. Any sort of deficits here besides anti-air and artillery? plane wise are doing okay. Good. I wish we could get another research slot. Uh, we can do this one too. Supply chain reinforcement or rubber processing. Very good. Go and grab that one. And then, good, as well. We are probably using battle tanks, main battle... Well, we're not using cur any currently in the field. 
It might be best to go in and do some of this stuff, because I don't remember what we have on our divisions. What do we have? 20 combat width, which is nice. Recon. So you're tried and true. Artillery, recon, engineers. Solve the Welsh issue. Mobilize the reserves. Sure. Even though Wales is a small minor power with a small minor military protecting it, we still need more manpower in order to overwhelm them. Mobilizing our reserves will let us have enough troops to defeat the Welsh scourge. It may be an overly extreme move, but we cannot let them have a chance at defeating us, or we'll be humiliated for the rest of the century. Pretty much. Hmm. Somewhat loyal. Virgin competent officers. There's really not much I can do about that. Okay. Zero. Popular support goes up by way too much. I could trade. L uh, let's see. Moderately increased, mildly decreased. Loyalty for this. <clears throat> mm, I'm gonna wait. <clears throat> you never know what you might need political power for. So, liquid reserves. Nice. Doesn't help out that much, but you know what? That's what success to locate with me. Very good. Very good. We can only get 1.27. Not bad. Not bad. And two days left. Maggie is definitely doing stuff. Mobilize. Good. A show of force. Before we cross the border into Wales to reassume our control over the territory, or our, really our territory, we will demonstrate our military might to the faces. Even when every Welsh border guard will hear the echoes of our artillery that will shortly be turned on them. Having flexed our army's muscles there will be no doubt in their minds what will come next. We will attack rapidly and will be too, and they will be too scared to even lift a finger to defend themselves. Well, we can hope so. You know, we can hope. Jet fighters, cast. We have no regular plans. That really sucks. Garbage. We how how's the production coming? Not bad, not not bad, not bad, not bad. What is the GDP of Wales even like? Can we see that? Welsh revolution. Oh, revolution! Free Welsh army. Good broadcasting. Democracy, huh? Well, we'll see about that. Construction speed. Oh, they got stuff over here. Or maybe not. Let's show a force. Solve the Welsh issue. We've already made all the necessary pre preparations for an invasion of Wales. Our army stands ready at the border and ready for battle. Now it is time to negotiate with the Welsh, where we will mercifully offer them a peace solution to the treachery. If they dare to refuse us, then they will get what they deserve. A good old whooping. A butt whooping. You know, good old butt whoopings. Let's see, political concessions. What is that? Alright, loyalty. Perfect. 72%. Awesome. Now, if I lower this, I can lower my loyalty to get more efficiency. But we'll wait. We'll wait first. I do want to see what happens. Hey, look, we can urban, visit urban centers again. And I'm joining here with my cat, Binky, who enjoys being in my room a whole lot. It really doesn't matter to lower this at all, but it's going, growing so slowly, it doesn't seem like it's really doing very much for us at all. So, This coffee's pretty good. Now, I want to get just one more thing of efficiency, because that's perfect. Oh, wait, hold on. No, it's not. No, it's not. 65%. Hmm. 69.8. The base loyalty is 65%, which I don't like. Actually, you know what? Can we visit military trainings? We're going to hold a rally first. 81% is pretty good. Purge competent officers. How much is this going to increase by? There we go. Now that's nice. The base efficiency is 62.5%. Nice. That still did nothing. Hmm. Still solved the Welsh issue. Thatcher has deemed England able to expand, and Wales will soon become its likely target. The nation has been a mess from the start, and will likely have no other option than to join us. After all, they are fully aware of the measures we will be willing to use if they were dared to defy us. They would have to be led by some sort of madman to decline. The time for unification talks with the Welsh are upon us. A letter which will be sent to Cardiff immediately to get the process started. What choice do they have? Hopefully none. They can't compete with their economy. The drums of war? Well, okay then. Let's see, Does, do, they don't have a focus tree. I hope they do get a focus tree. Ireland, political paranoia, not much to gain, Mr. Hitler. Humiliation of John, well, Hitler's gone, so. Alright, so Wells has refused to even host talks with the English over the topic of unification. Clearly, more aggressive measures will have to be utilized in order to bring about unification with Wales, measures which the English have made clear that they will not shy away from. K.O. and his damned clique of nationalist terrorizers will be put down. They will not stand a chance against the might of the English military. The English army will require some time to prepare, but given t time, K.O.'s men will be retreating from the cause they claimed they would die for. Those in England are all in one mind over how this will end, calling up the reserves. Cool. Uh, now, obviously, we are not quite ready to fight. Obviously, we need more planes. We need more anti-air uh, and anti-artillery, -art period. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I don't want to, I don't like doing it like this. 
We're going to keep that on there for now. Uh, do it like that. I really want to boost up anything else. Yeah, that's pretty much all we got. That sucks. So I'm going to put artillery at the top because we just need more more heavy hitters. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Uh, make some guns eventually. And unfortunately, I will be right back. Alright everyone, sorry about that, but we have calling up the reserves. War has become unavoidable. The Free Wales Army will no doubt be prepared to defend their homeland with a degree of ferocity few would have expected from the Welsh. If the English are to avoid all out humiliation at the hands of the FWA, more men will have to be called up to do the duty. The nation's reserves will help bring the fight to the Welsh. The generals of the English armed forces are keen to avoid even the slightest chances of humiliation at the hands of the Welsh. England's army may dwarf its Welsh counterpart, but this action is seen as necessary to bolster its ranks of soldiers and overwhelm the defenders of Wales. Nothing will be left to chance. We get 40,000 manpower. Wow! Ready the RAF, and which I will make sure that we will no longer cut military spending for now once we are good and ready to go. We can visit factories, but we're not going to do that. So let us ready the RAF. This is looking really nice. This is looking real good. The current base efficiency is 62.5. Uh, cool. One of England's greatest advantages over the Free Wales Army it is the fact that it has an air force at its disposal, kind of. Limited as the Royal Air Force may be, it will be still of significant use come the time of invasion. Therefore, more warplanes will be stationed in the airfields closest to Wales and prepared to take it to the skies and rain hail upon the Welsh. This may be one of the first times many of our pilots will see active combat. These men will especially need extra training before the time of the invasion. The roar of English engines would soon be heard all over Wales, and one could only imagine that it would be shake the Welsh people to the core. Ah, oh, more casts, jet casts, testing the Welsh, nice. Please, give me that cast. I love cast. Uh, yes. Actually, oh, we have early fighter CVs, but no. Nah. Let's see, you guys do that, you guys do that, and let's do that right there. We really, is that all we have? CV, CV, basic jet cast, which we're going to keep there. Uh, that's disappointing. Are we even making any planes? I mean, we're like one and a half a month for CVs. Jet cast. Oh, wait. Oh, there they are. Basic jet fighters. Oh, we need some more rubber. I also... Off screen, decided to get more fuel, so that's why we're actually stocking up for fuel. And I've stopped training the subs so they can repair. So, testing the Welsh. Given the Welsh enduring stubbornness to accept English hegemony, a plan has been drawn up to start a small scale attack on the Welsh border. This fight will draw out more soldiers of the Free Wales Army and enable the English to realize how capable they really are. An English victory is, of course, the expected outcome. Yet, in the unlikely event of an FWA victory, the English Army will be greatly dismayed and the government shall also be embarrassed. Gunfire will be exchanged and soldiers will fall, but whatever the outcome, war will follow and be much more bloody than a simple skirmish. Launch the attack. Are we ready? Uh, yeah, I think we'll be ready. Like, they've... Okay, we won! That was pretty easy, I'd say. Reports have been sent back from the Welsh border about the result of the border conflict. They conclude that little remains of the men of the Free Wales Army that are stationed in the area, and the attack had been a success, and the Welsh military has been significantly weakened as a result. The rest of Wales is now wide open to an attack. England has confirmed that its forces are vastly superior, and will luckily begin its invasion of the whole Wales shortly. These soldiers are ready, and soon they will march onto Wales. Oh, wait. We had six divisions here, too. Oh. Well, that's because they did the border attack thing. Cool. <sighs> Nothing can stop them for now. Wales will fall. Give it a day. Let these guys get back down the line. Three. Good enough. Who cares? <clears throat> Campaigning? Yeah, I don't think we're going to campaign. Visit urban centers. Oh, we almost have 5% more attack. Nice. Government stability is looking pretty good. And I do want to get maybe a little bit more stuff there. I just hope this doesn't fall too much more. It's hard to tell how far it's going to fall. Currently, loyalty is at what? Base loyalty is 65%. Our current loyalty is 69.8%. Next month, the loyalty is going to be 68.3, which is kind of okay with me. Here, the base efficiency is 62.5. Next month, it's going down to 61.4. Current efficiency is 61.4. Oh, it's actually increasing. So right now, if we don't do anything for efficiency, our base efficiency or efficiency right now will go up, actually, which is awesome. Here, though, uh, loyalty is currently 68%. But next month, it'll go down to 67.2, which is not ideal. Even with military sl uh, slashed. Ooh, I kind of want to do that too. Um, I still want to visit the factories. Eh, no, no, I don't. No, I don't. Visit urban centers. I still want to do that. Hmm. Yeah, this is increasing. I want to fix up the loyalty, though. I really do. <clears throat> 65... If I could increase it to 70, that'd be so good. But war is declared first. Since the outcome of the border war was announced, on both sides of the border, troops and civilians alike have been waiting the start of the inevitable English invasion. Is this like the rock band invasion? The Free Wales Army has held some time to prepare, but will no doubt struggle to hold off some advancing English, all while harried by the en enemy aerial superiority. However, the excruciating wait will soon be over. The order to attack will be ordered from England High Command, and the English army will march into Wales. Few will regret the passing of the FWA's grip over Wales. The dream of a Welsh Republic is long since dead, and what is left will soon be put out of its misery. Death to the FWA. 
All right, everyone, you are smashing them at, again, England and Wales at war. Unfortunate reality, and we basically smashed the living hell out of them. We killed off 2,000 Welsh versus no English casualties. Peace conference is over. And hopefully don't crash. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Give it... Uh, and there we go. They're gone. Yeah, Maggie is so good, she forced them back in without losing a single soldier's life. Now that is good stuff. The South United. The first confrontation in the reunification of our isle has been won as well as has been conquered. The English people have been reinvigorated by the government's success and are ardently waiting for our next triumph. There's much work left to be done, but Thatcher will doubtlessly make sure that it is done. Long live England, soon to be, be the UK. England defeat Wales, effective unification. I didn't even have to lower our budget, like, at all. That's awesome. Cool. The effect of unification. Now that some of the time has passed since unification, like a day, was finally realized, its effects have started to felt, be felt by the people of Wales. Initially, nothing much has changed. Shops stayed open and they spoke the same language as before. Many even wondered what all the fuss had been about to begin with. However, this would change. English goods would fill the shelves of Welsh shores. Joblessness became increasingly common and with less people to sell to, the store shut down too. An influx of English arriving in the Eng country would also make the Welsh language worthless, wiping out much of the local country with it. A new way of life was passing away in front of them. One they had never thought they would miss, and there was nothing they could do to stop it from fading away. Oh, I don't like terrorism, so I'm not going to click on that. I, I don't believe in that. South United. Eh, more stability, though. Now, we could go here, biggest threat. I don't want to piss off anybody too much, so we're going to do all this stuff last, because we do have a Great Britain, so we'll get down there eventually. Uh, the annual party meeting. Uh, Old Guard of Furious. I, we tried to do this one earlier, but it didn't actually happen. It is what it is. 62%. So is this still decreasing? 65. It is decreasing. This one is increasing. So we want more loyalty. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do military training. Lower our elite support just a little, by a little bit more. And then we'll do urban centers. But let's see what happens. 60, 71 versus 83. Now they're very loyal. Uh, our base loyalty is at 70%. Currently it is 78.3. God dang. If we can get it just maybe a little bit higher, then it could maybe say at 80. I think that would be good. And we're going to get 1.26 political power a day. Not bad. Pretty good. And we're still building stuff up, which is fine. You know what? Go and do that. Military austerity. Oh, that hurt us. That hurt, that hurt us. Oh. You know what? We already won the, the battle, so I'm just going to do that again. The English military. Pretty darn good, not going to lie. Hopefully we can get Unite Cornwall eventually under us, but we'll see what happens. Gross Germanisches Reich. Cool. Still having a lot of problems around here. Borkuta still exists. Looking awesome. We actually have a couple of main battle tanks, huh? Tanks. We have some IFVs, Comet 2s. We don't have that much... Oh, we actually have quite a bit of army XP. Nice, but annual party meeting, which we'll read very soon. But, the Iron Lady of the Isles. Uh, ooh, new threat to Britain. Hmm. I kind of don't want to do that, because that seems like we get some sort of event that doesn't look, sound very good for us. So how do we do army reforms? Because this way we can get some more military loyalty. So... Army reforms. The English Civil War exposed many of our problems in the country, our royal army included. In some battles, its performance was lackluster at best. In many cases, its methods and equipment have been barely progressed since the end of the Second World War. It is imperative that we learn from our mistakes and reform our army so it would become sufficiently prepared for any future engagements. However, we must also keep in mind that the prejudices harbored by senior officers who would prefer a return to the Grand Old Army that lost us against the Germans in the first place. Odd Lang Syne. Ah, what a great tune. First question at the RP annual meeting was rather awkward. Prime Minister! I have had the occasion to look around Parliament every now and then, and I must say that the faces I recognize from my long years of parliamentary service have seemed rather few of late. Is there any particular reason that the, the Prime Minister feels it's necessary to have these members be removed or replaced by more junior MPs who may not have the political experience required to win elections in these difficult times? That pursed her lips. Her political maneuverings were for the best of the party, and more importantly, for her own gain, she rose. <clears throat> I do agree with the honorable gentleman in that many new fresh faces are to be seen in the RP today, and I believe that to be a good thing as we cannot forever have the same members representing our districts. We must cultivate a new generation of backbenchers that one day, uh, they and I, will become central figures of the party and will be able to lead this country in the right direction. In addition, that she knew she had to choose her words carefully. Should she press forward for the youth vote or step back to keep the old guard in line? Press those who are out of date, out of office. That gains more influence. I kind of like that, but I don't want to lose political power. We must keep our experienced MPs in as well. We must keep them on the backbench until they're good and ready. Get more stability. I kind of like that. Hmm. Press forward. Keep the youth on the backbench. I'm going to go with the middle ground, because even though I want more influence, I don't want to lose political power, because I really need more political power now. Uh, stability is okay, so let's keep them do that. So the youth of our country. The next that followed was much easier. A young man stood near the back of the assembly and asked, does the Prime Minister have any specific measures that will draw younger voters to the Royal Party to secure future elections rather than simply focus on the past? This would be textbook. 
Indeed, honorable gentleman is right. We must secure the future of our party by attracting those whose livelihoods are at most at stake. And who are most vulnerable to stagnation and status quo. I believe that my economic reforms will allow aspiring young men and women of England to stand up for themselves and not to lean on the structures of old for their welfare. When young people are wealthier under the Royal Party policies, the Royal Party will benefit from it. Furthermore, should she promise to attract more young people or back off towards her main constituency? A considered party effort should be made to de-age our party culture. More influence. Hmm. 83% or 84% is pretty good. We should apply our efforts to old and young women. We must not forget those who elected us in the past. I don't want more influence, so... Uh, I really don't want to lose political power either, so we should apply efforts for both. Do the best we can, which means we'll get nobody under us. It is what it is. Uh, we're trying to make battle tanks. I guess technically, hmm. We have some of this. We do have, IFVs are okay. Let's see. Actually, mobile battalions, IFVs. Actually, are they considered tanks? Oh, they are considered. Oh, why do we, why do we even want IFVs then? What is their role or purpose? They take less supply, but they have more defense. Uh, they have less breakthrough, less armor, way less piercing, less soft attack, less hard attack, less air attack. I'm sorry, I keep switching between these. Slightly faster, just slightly. Oh, the Gibraltar Dem is finally finished. Maybe we'll stop making those. Can I actually make oh, like a good thing of tanks? I think that'd be awesome. Maybe go with six, and then that's not bad. Yeah. Organization actually goes down by quite a bit. I don't like that. Hmm. 34.2 isn't very good. This hurts our organization barely, barely, barely. But that soft attack is pretty good. That armor, they won't be able to pierce us, which is great. You lose quite a bit of organization, though. You know what? Let's try it. Screw the IFBs. I, I have no clue why we have IFBs. Thank you. At least we got another factory to use somewhere else, though. That's good. It has a motorized division, but it's really just a tank division. So, like, I'm not going to do another land auction focus just because we get a bonus to this later on. Military factory construction speed would have been nice earlier, but whatever. We have a targeting... Uh, how about more gun stuff? It is 67, so we have missed a couple things we could do here. Ah, recon 3 is good. Good, 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 good. Ah, army reforms. Very nice. So this is decreasing. It's currently 75.7. We can get down to 70. <sighs> Political concessions. I really want to do more of this, but I'm going to wait. If we can get up to 80, that's what I want. Alright, so now the, the base loyalty is 75%. Come on. Seriously? It doesn't go up to 80? It's slowly decreasing, which really sucks, but whatever. So... We'll read that very soon, in which we shall next do offensive efforts to get even more loyalty. So, by dealing by the war's end, the army faced numerous issues in dealing with stubborn rebel holdouts. As a result of these fallings or failings, we lost far more good soldiers than we needed to. All the issues with our current offensive capabilities have been made glaringly clear, and they will have to be fixed if our men are to stand a chance of surviving their next offensives. Good. Anything over here before we do anything? Uh, are you usually increase this? Let's, let's do just a little bit there. Just a little bit. It's not much. It's not much. That's okay. Just to say we're hurting the dead a little bit. So, unorganized and unmotivated. Prime Minister Maggie sat at her desk in Downing Street, a neat pile of folders and papers laid out in front of her. She signed one and picked up another, and so on. Being Prime Minister had his benefits, undoubtedly, but also its downsides. She grabbed a thick manila folder from the pile and saw that it had a large red secret stamped on the cover of it. She opened it. Failures of the Loyalist Government in the English Civil War read the title. She continued on, skimming through the pages. Apparently, in the view of the general who had compiled the report, it was a miracle that the Loyalists won at all. They suffered from a drastic lack of modern equality equipment and the great difficulty in procuring munitions. Thatcher couldn't believe what she was reading. Most generals claimed that the Loyalist Army was well equipped and supplied, and the victory wasn't all surprising. In addition, when contrast with armed rebels, Loyalist troops suffered from a massive lack of organization, cohesion, and morale. It is the opinion of this author that if these issues are not rectified quickly, the English Army will certainly surely suffer from them in the future conflicts. That should close the report and breathe deeply. Picking up the phone, she dialed the number for the defense secretary. He would answer for these claims. We need a complete reorganization. Honestly, after we smashed the living crap out of Wales, and I know it's only Wales. Like, it's not that strong, let's be real here. They only like three divisions max. I thought we did pretty well. Oh, we're also getting quite a bit of fuel, so with that in mind, I know this probably doesn't even matter at all. Train. We can invest more in GDP. I want to keep lowering this. I don't like seeing that. I ran on a balanced budget. So, we already have a balanced budget, so I want to make sure we extend that token over. And let's make sure these guys are actually fully trained. That'd be good. And get some more naval XP for now. Eventually, I'll stop training. Almost 0.5 a day. God dang, that's good. That is some good stuff, man. Alright, over here. So, I'm pretty much done with the military stuff for now. This is going to be where it's at for forever, pretty much. And this goes down to 75. That's fine. Offensive efforts. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Or maybe not. New spec ops. 
Um, defensive efforts. Military efficiency will mildly increase. Get war games. Armed police. Efficiency will decrease and loyalty will go up. Armed police. New spec ops. Ooh. Loyalty will increase. Efficiency will increase. Huh. New Royal Marines. Ooh. Loyalty will increase. Efficiency will increase. Military industry. That's okay. Doctrinal offenses. We honestly don't need that since I've already did most of it already, so. Yeah, that's just more division defense. Minus on division core territory. Oh, well, that is military efficiency will decrease. That's I don't like that. No. I want to come back over here, though. Uh, our biggest threat. Following on from her previous talks with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Thatcher's plan to persuade Pym that the presence of the Cornwall garrison on English soil is unacceptable. The mere existence of a garrison is indeed a grave and threat to the future of sovereignty of England. If Thatcher is to restore England's independence, she will have to get rid of herself of the Germans who occupy the Isle. Yes, we'll definitely see what happens, though, because the factory's good. If that's the case... There you go, right there. I wonder if Cornwall could ever unite the Isles under them. How uh, Pride of the Wehrmacht. That looks pretty good for him. Glorified beachhead, pretty much. Extreme overextension, yeah, that makes sense. Reliance on the fatherland, which is good. And an army without a state. Wow, that population is really bad. How strong are they? They got a little bit of manpower. They got three factories, three to five divisions. We could probably take them out, though. If we could, we didn't get interfered by uh, the Germans over there. Another division. Wow. I don't want to make too many divisions, like I said before. Just, just have a good amount. We could do that. Boats. I'm going to kind of ignore boats. Let's make sure we get better artillery. Budget-wise, well, that military spending did go up a little bit, but not too badly. Not too badly. Hold a rally. You know what? With 91% influence, we basically dominate the party. 93% influence, we absolutely dominate the party. And then I'm going to go with urban centers again. So, the Cornish problem soon enough. And I'm going to go ahead and do the Iron Lady of the Isles. Prime Minister Maggie has exceeded all expectations from following her rise to power and cemented her position as Iron Lady. Her tactics in consolidating control of the Royal Party and dealing with the society at large has raised her to the status of one of the strongest politicians in the British Isles. Only time will tell what her future plans are. So, the Cornish problem. It is an affront to our people. The any corner of the Isles will be under the control of a foreign power, Thatcher declares. Cornwall has been under the control of Adolf and his chums for far too long. Now is the time to reclaim that which is truly English. It's all well and good making bold declarations, he thinks, but there's an ocean of difference between words and actions. There's two paths to walk in this situation. They're sitting on either side of her desk at number 10, looking expectantly at her. The foreign secretary and his po posse, 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 Whiter on at her, uh, saying that she should open up diplomatic channels with Germany to negotiate a peaceful transfer of the garrison. After all, they say Germany has never been weaker and more likely to accept a deal. On the other side of her sits the Chief of Defense Staff and Defense Secretary. They're adamant that a strong show of force while England as its Zenith and Germany as its Nadir will get the Germans to fold, return Cornwall to English hands, and reestablish England as a force to be reckoned with. She needs to decide now, will she use a silk glove or an iron fist? Diplomacy is the way we've seen too much war lately. Never let it be said that Margaret Thatcher was a coward. We need to prepare to take Cornwall by force. Hard power. Oh, that seems like fun. Oh, we can still do that one. Cracking the UE. Oh, nice. But I, I, I kind of want to lose political power, though. Hmm. Let's go with hard power. I think that's the way we go to court visiting an old friend, right? Hard power. So... Germany has never been weaker. Not capitalizing on the state of their enemies would be the single greatest mistake in Thatcher's career, and allowing the Germans to control even one corner of the island for one moment longer would be an affront to everything she believed in. They're going to be marched across tomorrow. The defense staff nodded in grim determination, even as former minister drops his head into his hands. She gives the defense secretary the go-ahead to prepare for a full-scale invasion of the garrison using any and all means available to them. She receives some crisp salutes and promises that she'd have reports on the desk by morning. She knows but before they leave, they turn to her and advise her that they act quickly on this. If they wait too long, it would be very good, especially right now since Germany's reunited. Oh, we're probably going to piss off the Germans. Let's be real here. Oh, we still have terrorism. Should Trelawney live? It's a bright day in Plymouth. The Vermont soldiers are enjoying an unusually sunny day, and though there's an occasional issue with a local, for the most part, everything is calm and blissful. Across the border, however, is a different story. English soldiers are engaging in training exercises, preparing lines of logistics, marking out key strategic points for capture or destruction. They are ready for war. In London, Thatcher receives a word of a nod. The defense staff tell her that they should order, they could order the operation to commence now and be reasonably sure of success. Uh, however, they also say that if they were given some more time to prepare, they could also increase the time that an invasion could be effectively supported. Of course, the longer they wait, the longer they risk of running the operation being blown wide open. Oh boy. Prepare, we need a thousand dollars. So we, we lose a thousand infantry equipment. Should Tritoli die out? What is this? Remove support from... Oh, England and Wales. Oh, we're England and Wales now. Oh, we are. Removes puppet from Governor of Cornwall. Oh, we declare war on the Governor. Anglo-Cornwall... Alright, so we're not going to invade Scotland, obviously. Civilian administration. 
I'm sorry, but keep gunning it. Invest the GDP this time. That sounds like my cat. Pinky's he's now outside my room. Let's see. Oh, prepare. We need money. That is fine. Go ahead and do that. We'll see what happens. Come on, Pink. Pinky. Ah, he just wants to get rough. Whatever. We shall invade soon, hopefully by the end of this. And if Jim decides to invade, well, we're kind of screwed then. Let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do this. Go home, go home, go home and repair. Our navy, well, if we death stack this navy like we have already, we might do okay. Maybe, maybe not. Should Trelawney die? Revanchism runs like a virus across England. Those who remember the jackboots landing on the shores look at the garrison with a scowl, fingers itching to take up arms and fight, even though they don't look at the maps of their homelands and focus on their anger on the black spot in the southwest. Everyone knows that the situation as it is cannot stand. In London, Margaret Thatcher once again received her defense staff. The defense secretary looks confident now. The boys are ready, he says, and the current infrastructure and logistical lines could support an ongoing invasion for up to 60 days now. The odds of the invasion being a success have skyrocketed. However, he notes if the forces were given some more time to prepare, they might not be able to support an even even in longer invasion should it prove that the garrison is more entrenched than pre previously believed. Of course, the longer we wait, we can afford any longer. Now is the time to strike. Uh, why do you always want to wait? I don't have enough guns to do that, so. Oh, man. Uh, we are going to... Oh, actually, we do have enough. Oh, uh, we don't have 2,500. We got quite a few guns, but not enough to do that. So, here is the plan. We got 1. 1. 1.2. Not bad. The longer we wait, the worse we become. And, oh, I don't probably see that. Anything in there? Nope, that is good. We're going to end this episode by invading. So, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tomorrow, we will unite Cornwall under us and maybe piss off the Germans to the point where they might go to war with us, which would not be very good. But I hope you enjoyed the episode regardless. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow when we're going to be really pissing off the Germans. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.